last day of virtual vacation Bible school. Youth edition, this has been a fast week on our Rocky Railway. I've got a copy of a handout and I want you to pull it out. It says train of thought. We're going to play this really fast. So let's see how fast you can play this game for your brains. Each puzzle has a train of thought. One word that's common link for all three words in the puzzle. Now I know some of you have already started, so stop right now. You gotta be fair. You'll have 10 seconds to solve each puzzle and they'll get harder as we go. Ready? Go. Stop, go. Stop, go to three. Stop, go to five. Stop, go to six. Stop, do number seven. Stop, number eight. Stop, go to nine. Stop, go to 10. Stop, put your pencils down. Let's see how well you did. What'd you get for number one? The answer is I. Number two, N. Number three, you should all know this, tooth. Number four, might have struggled with this one, under. Number five, how many of you put time or how many of you put life? Okay, I'll take both of those. Number six, the answer is hand. How many of you got that? Number seven, the answer is short. Number eight, the answer is hot. Number nine, the answer is heart. Number 10, the answer is pan. That one's a little harder. Now, tell me, was it hard doing this by yourself without having help from everyone like we would have if we were at in-person vacation Bible school? It is harder by yourself, just like I bet your schoolwork's been harder. Do you work with your family or your friends to solve your problems? I have to. Since we've been in quarantine, we've had to solve problems in a much different way than we ever have in the past. Like this vacation Bible school. Melinda and her team of volunteers worked together to come up with a solution so that we could offer vacation Bible school even though we couldn't do it like we normally do. And I think it's been great. Working together isn't only good for games and school projects. It helps us in big ways in everyday life. When we listen to others' thoughts and we can share our own, we solve all kinds of problems and we can make friends too. Teamwork can be hard, but we can ask Jesus for help because Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Let's dig into this some more. Now, take out your three by five card in your packet and write your name in the center of the card. I made a big example for you to see. Bet you didn't know that's how I spelt my name. Now, I want you to answer these questions in each of the four corners. 
the age you were in the best year of your life so far. A superpower you would like to have. Something that truly scares you. And then the best gift you've ever received. Think about that for a minute. Now, some of those answers might have been pretty easy. Some of them might have been hard. Some of you probably, well, I know none of you were the age that I was when I had the best year of my life. But you might share a superpower. You're in vacation Bible school with people your own age. Um, you might have things that scare you. Some people are scared of the dark. Some people are scared of spiders. Me, not very fond of snakes. I'll bet if you share these on the Facebook page, you'll see that some of your answers match other people's and some don't. You might learn something unexpected about one of your friends that you thought you really knew. Today, we're talking about how Jesus' power helps us be good friends. People become friends for lots of reasons. You may have just experienced some of those. You enjoy the same activities. Um, you find understanding because you've had the same experiences. So on and so on. You're friends because you started school together. There could be lots of reasons that you're good friends. But when Jesus gets involved in our friendship building, something even deeper happens. Jesus' power connects people in ways that make them more like family. At least it can be that way. Let me show you what the Bible says about this in Acts 2, 42 through 47. And as you hear from this Bible passage, listen to these Jesus followers and what they are doing. Now this is a church. Picture in your mind what's happening as you hear what they did when they met. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate, their, and ate at their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. That's pretty awesome. How is that like or unlike our churches here or maybe one that you've been a part of before? Why would or wouldn't you like to be a part of a church community? Especially like the one described in the Bible passage. You can share an honest answer, write it down in your journals. What would attract you to a church? or not to that community like the early church described. They ate together, they shared their possessions, they worshiped together, they prayed together. To me, these sound like people who've moved past being good friends into something more like family. They're deeply committed to each other, but why? What's fueling that? So let's keep digging into this. Let's play a game. I'm going to name three things and I want you to shout out your favorite. Come on, play along, even if you're by yourself. Which is the best pet? Cat, dog, or goldfish? What's the best vacation spot? Beach, mountains, or staycation? Which we're all having to do right now. Okay, this is really controversial. What's the best candy flavor? Sweet, 
sour or scorching hot cinnamon. What's the best downtime activity? Video games, outdoor adventures, or reading a book? Now, I've already given you this one from me. What are you most scared of? Spiders, snakes, or gym teachers? Who do you prefer to hug? A family member, a friend, or you are just not a hugger? And lastly, what's your favorite subject in school? Math? Yes. Gym or lunch? I'm thinking, that was kind of fun, but I'm thinking that if we based our friendships solely on shared activities of choice, we would have a tough time connecting with people. Like the people of that early church, if we want our friendships to be lasting and strong, we need to root them in something else, Jesus's power. It's Jesus's power that helped those first Jesus followers look past how they were different, and some of them were very different, to discover what they had in common. Once they did that, they could enjoy time together doing what we heard described in the Bible. We have Jesus in common too. We know who he is, and we're on a journey to know him better as a friend. So let's do together what those first believers did. Let's eat. Grab something you love, or maybe the food you received tonight. I have my Fritos. Now, think back. I know your kids. Let me think back to something that I loved. I have always loved Fritos. That's why I brought them here tonight. They have been my favorite chip forever. And I know they're greasy and I know they're not good for me, but they are deliciousness. I dare you to argue with me. Write down in your journals what your favorite food is. It could be cookies, it could be ice cream, it could be pizza, Just share, and then share it on the Facebook page if you'd like. Okay. So we're going to check off eating together, even though we're not in the same room. Those early Jesus followers shared with one another too, in lots of ways. Let's give that a try. A skill swap is when you teach someone else a skill that can be demonstrated and taught in 90 seconds or less, such as how to do a simple dance sequence, I'm thinking TikTok flip a coin, or maybe take a pulse. If you can't think of a skill you could teach, you could share a cool piece of knowledge and why it might come in handy, such as knowing what to do if it's bad weather. I'm gonna share with you a tip that I learned that I think is one of the coolest tips I learned during Scouts. If you need to start a fire and you have no kindling, and you know you gotta have kindling to start a fire. You can use oily corn chips like Doritos or Fritos because they're flammable. But do not try this without an adult. What's your skill? Share it on the Facebook page. Tell us what you can do. Show us in a video. So now, let's answer some questions. You can write your answers in your journals, and I hope you're filling those journals up this week. What's something you know about Jesus? Maybe it's something you learned this week that you want others to know. I want everyone to know that Jesus loves them. No matter how bad they think they are, Jesus will forgive them. Go ahead, write something down. What's something about Jesus you want to show or model for others, such as forgiving others? For me, sometimes that's kind of hard. I have a hard time listening. I like to tell people and I like to talk as you've seen this week. So for me, I have to remind myself all the time that Jesus listens to us, that he hears us, 
and I need to remind myself to listen to other people and take their needs and wants into consideration. Now, think about what are all these things about Jesus or why are all these things about Jesus worth sharing with other people? That might be kind of hard. But I think it's because no one ever, even your parents, no one will ever love you like Jesus loves you. And that's the best story in the world to tell. I get excited thinking about the fact that Jesus loves me even though I'm not perfect. I mess up and have a messy heart every single day. But Jesus still loves me. And he still loves you. And I want everyone to know that story. Now, something happens when believers eat together. They share who they are and what they have, and they celebrate Jesus. They become friends that are family, and they encourage one another. We've been together for a week now and gotten to know each other. I hope in some ways we've become friends or deepened friendships that were already there. So let's encourage each other and take what we've learned this week and apply it to our friendships. Tell your friends and family why you love them and appreciate them. Even your siblings, you're gonna make their day. Something else the early church did together was praise God and pray. We'll do both. But first, let's thank Jesus for all the ways he shows us he's a good friend. The best friend each of us could ask for. We're going to read the praise, some praises from our praise page. You have one in your packet, and it is full of praises. And this comes from the Bible, and it is true, and it is honest. Praise that God deserves. Read these. Let these truths sink in. They describe our God who loves us and invites us into a friendship with him through his son, Jesus. Friendship and family, being together with loved ones. These matter to God. And how awesome is it to know that God wants that closeness with us? Let's praise God together. is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders. That's Exodus 15, 11. In Psalm 104, 1, let all that I am praise the Lord. O Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. In 1 Chronicles 29, 13, Oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. In Psalm 9-1, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. Hashtag God sightings. But as for me, I will sing about your power. Each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love. For you have been my refuge, a place of safety when I am in distress. Psalms 59, 16. O oh Lord, I will honor and praise your name, for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now you have accomplished them. Isaiah 25, 1. I will shout for joy and sing your praises, for you have ransomed me. Psalm 71, 23. Psalm 136, 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, let's pray. Jesus, you're a good friend because you always listen no matter what. Thank you. 
God, you've been listening as we read these praises out loud. You're here with us, and we're grateful for that. Thank you that Jesus' power helps us do hard things, that Jesus' power gives us hope and helps us be bold. Thank you that because of Jesus' power, we can live forever and we can be good friends with one another and with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow. We've talked tonight and looked at what it means to be a good friend. What makes Jesus a good friend and how Jesus' power helps us be such good friends that we're more like family. I'm curious though, how do you connect with your friends? It's been a lot different the last few months. Raise your hand if you have any kind of social media account. And I know probably all of you do. Raise your hand if you have more than one social media account. Raise your hand if most of your conversations with your friends happen either through social media or text messages on your phones. Raise your hands if you have friends you haven't seen in a long time or even talked to directly, but you kind of know what's going on in their lives because of what they post on social media. With that quick poll, we just learned a little bit about the roles technology and social media have in our friendships. When we, when we looked at how the friends in the early church connected, there was nothing in there about Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Snapchat, or any of those other social media channels. Okay, I know they didn't exist back then, and the internet did exist, exist back then, but Think about how those friends built and maintained their friendships. I wonder if social media can be a route to the kind of friendship they had or something that could possibly derail that kind of friendship. Write what you think about these questions in your journal or what is happening in your life. What are ways social media or technology helps your friendships? What are ways social media or technology hurts your friendships? Tell about some ways you see people encouraging each other on social media. And then write down some ways you see people tearing each other down on social media. Do you or don't you think social media is a way to build and maintain lasting friendships? What could you do instead or along with social media to build friendships like those we read about in the early church? I'm sure you have some great ideas, probably ones that I've not even thought of. And the world of social media really could use a friendship makeover. So what if we started one? What if we make over the way we use social media in our friendships and others decide to do the same? That's an exciting thought and it all starts with our own personal choices of how we use social media. Take out your copy of the social media makeover, the handouts in your packets. Now let's spend some time thinking about what this could mean for each of us. You can use this handout as a guide and a place that you want to map out your plan for how you'll use social media in your friendships. Talk through your plan with Jesus and ask for his help to be a good friend in today's technological, digitally linked world. You've got a pen, if you've, unless you've already lost it, in your packet. Spend some time praying and working through your social media makeover pages. Share your discoveries and your strategies on our Facebook page, 
you might give somebody else some ideas on how to make over their, their social media presence. My prayer for every one of you and your efforts is that you will use social media differently, that you will use it to deepen friendships, to make those friendships more like family, and you include those friendships with Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Vacation Bible School virtually this year. Hopefully I'll see you in person next year. And keep adding some things to that Facebook page. Take care.